Hey guys, welcome to part two of our strategy from story series. I'm kind of interested in this. I, I don't know exactly if it means that much, but I think it's a new way of thinking about the game and it may serve as a good introduction for newer level players who are trying to break in and don't necessarily understand the nuances between the three races. So today we're going to be talking about Terran. We all should be pretty familiar with the Terran. We are Terrans ourselves, after all, from old Earth, right? Obliged to adapt to a difficult life on the almost lifeless worlds in the galaxy, the Terrans are masters of survival. Without the advanced technology of the Protoss, or natural abilities of the Zergs, their military forces involve a mix of different units, from the efficient but disposable marines to the highly trained pilots, the Terrans are a tenacious group that will not relinquish their territories easily. You guys might have seen a Newbie Tuesday I released recently that actually went into very high details about how Terran don't relinquish territory easily. It's all about leapfrogging the tanks, unseaging one or two units, pushing those forward, while the rest of the units are covering those. Think of in Call of Duty, for example. If you're a squad of five against another squad of five and you guys are actually coordinating, if you're going to turn a corner, you're not just going to blindly turn the corner and hope you don't die. Because that's not how Call of Duty is played. One person gets an angle where they can actually defend that person. That person then comes, turns the corner, and right behind them, the other person skirts to safety. So each person allows the other person to make a move. It's a teamwork type of thing. And that's the same way that Terran and StarCraft works. Think about this. You have eight tanks, you lift one, move it to the front of the line. That's the guy that was in the back. Then once he sieges up, you grab the next guy and move forward. And you're all, like the whole time this is happening, your marines are slowly moving forward. This allows your other army to defend every unit that moves forward. Because Terran are great at controlling territory. But if ever the entire tank army sieges, a Zerg could roll, roll, roll right to the Terran's death. The rest of the tanks stop that from happening. Another example, same example, but just another part of it. Why are the Marines there? The Marines guard the tanks because the tanks can't shoot up. Thank David Kim for that. Thank you, dude. That would be in that. But it, they can't shoot up. So the Marines, which are terrified of Banelings, are guarded by the tanks. You just have a small squad of marines at every tank. Follow it right along. No problem. If the tanks ever get mutilus coming over them, of course, the marines are just going to stem, boom, waste mutilus. You can't afford to lose mutilus, so the zerg would rather throw the lings and banelings in first. So that means taking a huge army of ling baneling and losing most of it to random tank shots. It's not until the last throws of the Zerg army get there that the the Terran is really gonna like have to force the fight. Because think about it, if you've got Marines, right? You've got Marines up front guarding your front tanks. You've got Marines at every stage. If a Ling Baneling army is running at you, as the lings get closer, especially the banelings, your marines are going to fall back and you're just going to be like, okay, this tank's dead. And you're going to hope that the banelings explode on your tank. But let's assume your players, your opponent's good, right? And he's just going to keep rolling his tanks forward, leave a few of the lings behind, but mostly he's just running past the tanks. And his mutilisks are going to come in and kill the tanks once the marines have been knocked back. The marines don't have to die because marines are really easily replenished. But tank counts are not. And that's the goal of the Zerg. So noticing that the Zerg has to pry those units apart. We can agree that Terran are a tenacious group that will not relinquish their territories easily. So once Terran locks in a position, what happens then? Well, typically, at least in Terran versus Zerg, the... Terran wants to grab the middle of the map, and that's why they almost always begin to expand toward their opponent. Because let's think about it. Once a Terran locks down the middle of the map, preferably on the high ground with some Zelnaga tower support, they are controlling that position, and like we said, they've 
can hold that position very, very well. Well, once they hold that position, initially, most people wouldn't think like that's a very valuable position. But let's talk about the benefits of that. From the middle of the map, you can actually send drops in multiple directions. When you control the Zelnaga Towers, your opponent feels blind, especially a non-Zerg opponent, with, but even overlords have their limitations. Vikings in this particular stage of the game are very, very effective at just knocking overlords back. So you're blind as a Zerg player with all these drops coming from all these angles. You have to crush this middle position. But of course, that's not going to be easy. Terran control their position. They are tenacious. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.